Hello and welcome to this talk on how to implement a regenerative snubber network within a multi-level converter with fewer parts than you might think. First, we're going to quickly look at ringing in a switching converter's commutation loop before reviewing snubber circuits, where we will then apply them to an example multi-level converter and show you the performance benefits that you can get from this approach. So to begin, here I'm showing you an example half-bridge buck stage, which in continuous conduction mode has two operational states, a high state and a low state, which it periodically switches between. The act of switching between these two configurations results in the circuit's parasitic elements needing to be abruptly rebiased, which gives rise to high-frequency ringing immediately following each state transition, as highlighted here. If this ringing isn't addressed, it can easily overstress your switches and destroy your converter. Now, since you can typically achieve zero voltage switching on high to low transitions in a buck converter, we're going to instead be primarily focusing on the low to high transitions, which is where we'll see most of the voltage ringing in practice. So to model a low to high transition, we need to model the circuit parasitics, beginning with the loop's parasitic inductance L par and the low side FET's internal drain to source capacitance COSS, drawn separately here for clarity. But remember that this capacitor really exists inside of the low side switch. Now, since the high side FET is turning on, we'll also model the high side gate driver, whose rate of turn on is controlled by pull-up resistance R gate. Also note that since this is a high frequency event, the output inductor acts as a high impedance choke and can be ignored. So if we then plot the voltage on COSS as the high side FET turns on and the highlighted commutation loop begins to conduct, we see that VDS shoots upwards towards the input voltage. But as a result of parasitic inductance, we get an underdamped second order response with one half CV squared of energy being dissipated as the ringing decays. To address this, a typical design approach would be to first and foremost minimize the parasitic inductance by designing a very small commutation loop, for example by strategically using inner copper layers as shown here on the right. Now having done this, designers will typically then address any remaining overshoot by gently increasing our gate, which serves to slow down the high side turn on, effectively dequeuing or damping the transition. However, we really don't want to overdo this since slowing down your turn on directly degrades efficiency as a result of increased voltage current overlap loss. To summarize this approach, we can address our overshoot, but we are still burning a half CV squared of energy every switching cycle and our overlap loss is degraded as a result of an increased R gate value. To add insult to injury, this overlap loss is made to seem even worse due to the fact that we now have access to incredibly fast gallium nitride switches that would be restricted to operate much slower than their achievable switching speeds. So so can we do better? Well, to do so, we took a look at a family of assistive circuits called snubbers. Now, snubber circuits are well known, dating back over a century, with hi-fi and audio folks today often referring to Zobel networks. But taking a more power electronics focus, uh, we can consider the definition posed by Philip Todd at Unitrode Corporation, where he defines snubber circuits as small networks of parts in a power converter whose function is to control the effects of circuit reactances. So let's take a quick look at a common RCD snubber applied to our half-bridge commutation loop. Here we introduce a diode, a biasing resistor, and a clamping or catching capacitor that is sized to be larger than COSS and is biased to approximately V in through the biasing resistor. During a switching transition, the voltage on COSS shoots upwards, but as soon as it exceeds V catch, the diode turns on and clamps C catch in parallel with COSS, temporarily increasing the loop's effective capacitance and dramatically reducing the peak voltage reached. 
Some small residual ringing is seen on the low side FET, and the catching capacitor slowly decays back to VIN with an overdamped RC time constant, where again the decay represents uh, a loss of a half CV squared. Note that this overshoot reduction happens without needing to increase our gate, which allows our switches to now operate at their maximum achievable switching speeds, now limited instead by the gate driving circuitry. Moreover, there is less pressure to minimize the parasitic trace inductance, where instead what we really care about is decreasing the impedance between C catch and C OSS, whose loop is shown here in green. This is the new critical path, and it's this property that makes snubbers particularly effective in large geometry designs, such as those using TO220 packages, for example. The snubber just needs to be placed close to the element that it's protecting. So in this case, we have mitigated ringing and not worsened our overlap loss. In addition, we have relaxed our geometry constraints. However, there still remains one half CB squared of energy burnt off every switching cycle. To resolve this, we need to talk about something that is not quite as common, and that is the field of regenerative or non-dissipative snubbers. Now, there's a few different types, but here is an example that uses four additional components, including an inductor and one active switching device. In this case, we have the same diode capacitor catching circuit, uh, but rather than bleeding off one half CV squared of energy, instead, this energy is periodically resonated back onto the input voltage, effectively recycling it. Again, we have our relaxed geometry constraints and only need our catching circuit to be close to the low side FET. As a result, we reduce overshoot and ringing, we switch fast for reduced overlap loss, and we now desire a larger commutation loop to preserve our half CV squared energy, which can now be recycled. The caveat here is that this approach is starting to look pretty complicated or cost prohibitive with added magnetics and control. But let's see if we can apply these techniques to multi-level converters, where here I'm depicting a moderate level count flying capacitor multi-level or FCML converter as an example. Now if this topology is new to you, just know that each switch pair operates in a complementary fashion, just like our half bridge, and that each switch only experiences a fraction of the input voltage, allowing you to use lower voltage devices with higher figures of merit. Moreover, the output inductor sees an n minus one decrease in volt seconds and a frequency multiplication effect that leads to an n minus one squared reduction in the magnetics. Lastly, it does all this while retaining a full output regulation range, making it an ideal candidate for high density inverters, motor drives, etc. Now, looking at this design, we can make out five commutation loops overall. And so, using our regenerative snubber approach, we would need 20 additional components, five being magnetics and five requiring their own gate driving and control signals. This is not ideal. Fortunately, there is a much better solution, which brings me to this work's proposal that is a distributed regenerative snubber with reduced part count. To begin, we insert a catching element along each low side FET, S1 through S5. Just like before, the catching caps will provide an alternative conduction path for commutation loop energy and clamp the peak voltage on each switch. Now we need some other way to remove or recycle this captured energy without adding a ton of switches and inductors. To do this, we daisy chain each catching circuit together using one additional diode. Now, while this might look like a simple charge pump network, this recovery network can actually piggyback off of the zero voltage switching experienced during high to low transitions, which makes this a soft charged recovery network with high efficiency. To explain, let's zoom in on switches S4 and S5, where S4 is about to undergo a ZVS turn on. Here we'll assume S5 is already turned on and that the output inductor is sucking charge out of COSS4 in preparation for its zero voltage turn on. 
once the voltage on COSS4 has decreased to be equal to the voltage difference on catching caps 4 and 5, their adjoining diode will turn on automatically and allow the catching caps to participate in the soft discharge affected by the output inductor. In this way, recovered energy can be gently shuffled rightwards through all cells in this distributed snubber network, riding on ZVS events within the primary power stage. Having collected all of this energy on CCATCH5, we now have a few options on how to use this recovered energy. For example, we could tap energy off of CCATCH5 to power the gate drivers, uh, MCU or clock generators. But in this case, we opted to periodically resonate the captured energy back into the power path and on to CFLY4. To do so, we added one small inductor and one small switch, MREG, which is a fixed cost for any order of multi level converter used. Now since MREG shares its source with S7, we also leveraged existing level shift and gate drive circuitry to control it, so minimal overhead there. To demonstrate this approach in action, we built a discrete hardware prototype operated with a 200 volt input and an arbitrary 5 to 1 conversion ratio. The position of the components uh, almost exactly matches the schematic on the right. Now here you can barely make out MREG situated next to S7's gate drive circuitry. Uh, the recycling inductor LREG could be implemented using parasitic trace inductance, but to be safe we opted to use a tiny 3 by 3 millimeter part, which is the only component located on the back side of the PCB. If we take a look at the commutation loops, we see large open lateral geometries signifying a very large parasitic inductance. Zooming in on one of the low side switches, you can see the gate driving circuitry, including a strong LMG1020 gate driver placed directly next to the GANFET for very fast turn on. Just above the GANFET, you can make out the catching capacitor and associated snubber diodes. Now, during a switching transition, once the commutation loop rigging exceeds the voltage stored on CCAT, the catching diode turns on, modifying the conduction path as shown. As mentioned previously, the new critical design geometry is now the area highlighted here in green, which can easily be made very small with fewer and lower voltage components. Taking a look at some measured waveforms, and we see a 100% voltage overshoot with the snubber disabled when using a fast turn on transition and 2 ohm gate resistor. Using the conventional approach of increasing our gate to reduce this ringing, we measure a 63% overshoot when using 35 ohms. Lastly, with the proposed snubber enabled, we see the lowest voltage overshoot with an obviously clamped peak voltage, despite only using a 2 ohm gate resistor. Turning then to measured efficiency curves and we see that this approach achieves not only the lowest overshoot but also the highest efficiency due both to its safe use of a small R gate value and as a result of energy recovery where at light load you can make out a few percentage points increase in efficiency. To demonstrate the energy handoff between each catching cell, we can look at the ZVS transition on switch S4, where as its drain to source voltage approaches zero, we see catch capacitors four and five decreasing and increasing respectively as they piggyback on the soft discharge of S4. Note that here you can also see the expected bump increase in each catch capacitor as S4 and S5 turn off and their overshoot is clamped. Now it's not immediately obvious where the other uh, step increases are coming from, but these are as a result of other energy handoffs happening earlier in the chain. Finally, to demonstrate our captured energy being recycled, here we see that as MREG turns on, CCATCH5 oscillates symmetrically about VFLY4 as it resonates its charge back onto the fourth flying capacitor. This validates intended operation and explains the improvement in light load efficiency. 
So to conclude, we've taken a brief look at commutation loops and ways to mitigate switch overstress due to parasitic ringing. Moving forward with regenerative snubbers, in this work we have demonstrated a distributed snubber network applicable to multi-level converters that only requires a single active device and one small inductor. Moreover, this snubber network can piggyback on existing ZVS transitions to allow for efficient energy collection with minimal parts. This first prototype has demonstrated over a 66% reduction in overshoot while improving converter efficiency. So thanks for listening.